part two. This may be a three-parter since the first part was cut short. Okay, so with with where I left off, I was saying that for me, Marvel Comics did it first with the first Secret Wars and the second Secret Wars about uh, Rachel Summers being Cyclops and Jean Grey's kid from the future, but not in their future, in a different timeline where she crossed over and wound up having to fight the Beyonders. She was wound up going back home where she became a warhound because they finally got her and all this other shit. Now, that shit's probably been fucking redconned, but that was my example of alternate timelines. They did it again in the late to middle 90s with um, the X-Men known as Nathan Gray, who was basically cable from an alternate timeline or a future or an unseen event. Something happened where he was never a cyborg, but he was always a mutant. And probably one of the most powerful mutants that ever was. And Marvel did it again with other time flops and stuff with now a Rachel Gray instead of a Rachel Summers. So that should tell you how far it's been since I've touched a fucking comic book. Now, on the other hand, DC has done it with the New 52s and the Rebirth and all the other stuff with alternate timelines and stuff too. And Flashpoint. Now, I'm not really familiar with all of Flashpoint. It was a pretty good movie or whatever. I've seen clips of it, but I haven't been able to find the whole damn thing. And it's the same thing with, um... It's another one they did, but I can't remember it. And they, they did it with Legion when the cartoon used to come on. With the Legionnaires, they used to go back in time to get Superman to come into the future to fight. And Superman would go back because the Legion taught him how to fly in the cartoon. Which I was like, you know, in the comic book, his daddy taught him how to fly. Because he whirled him around with a fucking belt. In the comic... The, I'm old, but I had the comic where he taught Clark how to fall out by rolling him around with a fucking lasso. And his dad, he's like, I look, you just gonna jump, and I'm gonna roll this lasso. And then eventually, Clark got the hang of it, and he could fly. And again, it's probably been redcon the fuck out of, but you know, he did not learn how to fly from the Legion until like sometime in the 90s where they rebooted every damn thing. And then, at, at this time, I'm, like, so done with them, and I'm getting pissed off of X-Men, so i um, about to give up on comics. But I kept, I stuck in until, like, 2010, and then I was like, all right, fuck it, I'm done. I still love my comics. I'm just not going to spend money on the comics because they went in a completely different direction. And when they changed back, I had no knowledge, so everything I speak basically has been redconned the fuck out of anyway. But, you know alternate timelines in them, and they've, they've made movies like the one with Jet Li where the bad Jet Li is killing all of the innocent people and the strength goes into two different entities of Jet Li. Well, eventually both of them will have one-on-one -on -one combat and the good guy wins and the bad guy's locked up in prison. Jason Statham's in it. Anyway, so we can't say that those concepts don't exist. We can't say that they do. Without a shadow of doubt, we don't have proof either way. But the thing is, with alternate timelines, alternate dimensions, and alternate herbs and shit like that, there supposedly are people who are us, just not us. And in some perspective, someone told me, and I'm going to leave their name off because I know who she is, but I kind of agree with her that time is happening in a continuous loop. And in every earth, everything is happening in the same place, and everything is changing different outcomes of those earths. And so that when we all die, eventually all of our souls merge back into one body and we go to the Celestial Collective of the Great Creator and we give him all the knowledge that we learn. And then he'll either recycle us and send us all back and change our lives and maybe we'll live the life that we live in a different world, on a different plane, at a different time with a different gender. And things will either be better or worse. Right? Now, I unfortunately do believe that shit. Most people are going to say, James, you're a fucking nut. And I would agree with them, because I do believe that shit. But, you know, I'm only one person on one plan of existence who probably believes that. And if the other me's are having a better life than me, good lord, what I wouldn't do to switch up with them. You know, and maybe if I see the girl version of myself, I have sex with her. Sorry, that was a joke for Sliders fans only. If you didn't get that, you didn't see the episode of Sliders, you missed a good one. Jeremy O'Connell, Jerry O'Connell, the first O'Connell in the show... Had met his female self. Alright. Don't ask. It's a long story. Anyway. 
I think they did that in homage of Michael J. Fox's uh, Back to the Future 3. Yeah, I'm not sure. But anyway, Sliders was a great show. So, you know, those shows did through time lines and stuff like that. Star Trek does it. X-Men did it. The Legion did it. The Legion of Superheroes from DC Comics. I can't really say if the Justice League did it. I know they did it on the cartoon, but I don't remember them doing it in the comic books because I'm more Marvel than DC. But, you know, you, every now and again you get a... If you're, if you're a Marvel fan and a DC fan, but you're more Marvel than DC, every now and again you'll get a um, a Phenomenon comic, which will get you up to speed. Like, you hear about the New 52, so you get the first issue of every New 52 to get you up to speed with what they've done with the character. Or you'll get online, you'll, you'll figure out what the fuck I'm trying to say. Now, with Marvel, on the other hand, if you're more Marvel than DC, you pretty much know, as a Marvel fan, or go to Marvel.com and they'll get you up to speed and all the other stuff. And sometimes Marvel.com isn't always on point because they, them and the writers don't always seem to be on the same page as the guys running the show. So that, that kind of fucks you up a little bit because apparently when they turned the, flag, the Guardians of the Galaxy into the five people you all know versus the 15 to 30 people I knew with major victory in them, it's like a whole different fucking shit. And um, the major victory in them that I knew, it's pretty much stated they're in like the 35th century. And major victory himself went back through time to the 616 to warn Vance Astro about how this is going to happen, how he's going to become justice, and how he was going to become uh, whoever the hell he was going to become before he became Major Victory, which was justice. But he started off Marvel Boy. He met each other. I forgot how, but he wasn't from the 616, and he explained a lot of shit to Vance. And apparently the 616 fans missed the mark because when he was a new warrior and he was justice, he killed his daddy with a telekinetic blast. Anyway... Moving, moving on, which also led up to the original um, Civil War and the Accords and all that bullshit. Anyway, now that all that shit's been redone and rebooted, and now there's an MCU versus the MCC or MCCU, Marvel Comic, Comic Universe, whatever. I totally gave it an extra abbreviation. So I guess it's two MCUs, I guess. Marvel Comic Universe and Marvel Movie Universe. They don't all coexist at the same time, I guess. I don't know how this shit works. I don't care. Although I would love to work with Marvel and have a movie with there would be an actual mixed superhero because there's so many of us. No, there really isn't. But anyway, you know, the whole concept of time travel, alternate timelines, alternate universes, alternate futures, alternate past, alternate worlds in general is not a hat to me. But I also believe in it in my real life because somewhere there has to be one me it's fucking having a good day somewhere. But I brought up the time travel and shit because of medical procedures and shit. And no one has really been able to explain to me. And I haven't really sat down with the actual doctor because I don't want them to fucking call the guys in the white coast to put me in a straight jacket. Or call the government because I've actually stumbled on something that might actually be exactly on point. You know, th- there's causes and effects to everything. And there are some things you ask and some things you probably shouldn't. And I probably shouldn't be asking on this video. But... With scientific breakthroughs and scientific procedures, who the fuck taught us? You know, so I want you guys to ponder that for a little bit. You know, just just think about it. I mean, because a lot of people don't think about the first surgeons, like stitching out your wound from battle when you get stabbed, the cauterizing the wound. Who taught us how to fucking do that shit? You know, or you lose a hand and they sew it back on and it works still or you 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 lose your hand in battle and they can't sew it back on so they just fuse it and you you're, you're stuck with a, a nub but you still have your ability to fight you know who taught us how to fix us is the real question so if you guys think I'm nuts that's fine but if you weigh on what I said I mean if you literally Take that shit for face value and then think about that shit. Okay, so who was the first guy who put in <coughs> excuse me? Who put in the first set of stitches into a human being? Who taught him how to do that? To stitch up a wound perfectly and seal it and then cauterize it so that it doesn't get infected before gangrene became a problem. 
for diabetes and all these other disenfranchised fucking colds and shit became a problem. Who taught us how to make medicine? Because we don't have, have a cure for everything. We have treatment. And I say that because we have not cured the common cold. We don't have a cure for the flu. Your body has to work it out. All right? So when you logically, and all you smart people will if you're watching, when you logically think about the shit that I'm saying, you're like, yeah, you know, James might be right. There might be some truth to this time travel shit. And that's just the way I feel about it. I'm pretty sure I'm probably not right. But you're talking to a guy who's never really wrong on most of the things that he says. It just takes a time for the world to catch up with what the fuck I say. Right? So before I close out, time travel, ghosts, goblins, fairies. How do we know that in some realm or another, I left off realms, that was the word I was looking for earlier, but how do we know in some realm of existence that these guys don't break the veil and come through, allowing certain people at certain times to run into things like Bigfoot and things like that? If, if the veil can be breached, or if you can see through the veil of the time and space continuum, how do we know... You weren't meant to see it on that day. I've seen ghosts. I've seen goblins. I've tangled with the witch rider. I can't catch that motherfucker, but it knows. It's watching. And it knows that I'm watching it as it's watching me. And I'm just waiting because I'm going to prove to that song bitch that it does exist. I'm going to prove to the world if I ever catch this motherfucker. It's going to get exposed. I don't know how, but it's going to get exposed. And the thing with the Supernatural... This movie called Usual Suspects. I reference this every time before I close out when I say something like this. So, in a reference to the Usual Suspects, and I'm going to quote this movie until the day I die. And if you don't like it or believe what I say, the movie is called The Usual Suspects. Kevin Spacey's in it. It's a good movie. Um, I don't remember what actor says the line, but I'm going to say the line. Because it's the, probably the truest thing ever written in a movie. And I think it's the truest thing ever said in life and also because I believe in God you kind of can't knock what the actor says the only thing that the devil ever had to do to mankind was prove that he did not exist enough said how do we know that Bigfoot ghost goblins and time travel does not exist we don't have tangible proof because we don't know where to look but start with medical procedures start with Ancient medical procedures. And I'm not just talking about like ancient China shit. I'm talking about like ancient medical procedures everywhere. Because some of these things don't make sense, but they work. And you have to think, how the fuck did you have this when we didn't have that much of an advancement back in this time? Because some asshole does have a time machine somewhere. And that person has probably some ties with the government. Because if you ever think about how certain members of the government seem to not age at all, you have to wonder, are they in a hyperbolic chamber where they're sleeping and then they seem to still get the same fucking jobs and revoke these assholes right back into office? Something isn't 100% there. Now, I will say this, that if I get a job as the men in black and I stop posting, you don't know why. Either I got a job or I got dead. I'm James Wimsey, or the channel still sucks if I just decided to just say fuck it. Anyway, I'm James Wimsey. Just come for number two. B, C, and U. I'm taking my nap now. I'll post all of these after I get off from work, by the way.